So it's been a little while since we've done a three watch collection here on Watch Chris. Today we are doing Vacheron and I am very excited about this video because Vacheron have always been a grail watch for me and now I own three of them. I have a three watch Vacheron collection and I am very proud of that because I've always aspired to own a Vacheron. I've always seen the value in the brand. Now they're getting hyped up a little bit which is kind of ironic but I paid discounted prices for all the watches that you're going to see in this video. I love them and I'm very excited to share them with you as I mentioned. So let's flip the camera and take a look at this collection. So here it is. This is my three watch Vacheron collection. I have three watches from Vacheron. I hope not to be limited to three watches. However, these were huge purchases for me and uh, eventually I would like to own another one. However, right now I only have three. So you have before you a Traditional. This is a World Timer in solid 18 karat rose gold. And then we have right here my other World Timer. So I do have two World Timers. I like the World Timer from Vacheron. I don't know why, but I really do. This is the Overseas Vacheron. This is a discontinued watch and this is a discontinued watch. And this is a discontinued watch, so you can see a theme here. All of them basically got discontinued right after I bought them. Uh, that's just what happened. So this is a black silver dial, and this is a rose gold dial. So the rose gold is actually, uh, it consists, the dial consists of rose gold. Basically everything on this watch is rose gold. This is the Key de Lee. This is a very weird watch from Vacheron. It was their sort of entry into making something very different. This is titanium. It has a sapphire dial. It has uh, a movement that you could see through that sapphire dial that is decorated really nicely, but it also has a lot of elements that you can only see under uh, black light and other specific types of light. But you can see there's a little sun right there. There's a lot of different little things on this dial that are sort of etched into it, printed on it, and then uh, Obviously, it interacts with uh, sunlight as well because it is loomed. And it is kind of rare for Vacheron to be loomed, but I do have two Vacherons on the table that are loomed. Obviously, I do lean towards sports watches more than I do dress watches, but Vacheron, not many sports watches, really, just the overseas. So I'm going to take each one of them. I'm going to give you a brief overview of each one of them, how they sort of fit into this three watch collection. And then we will do a loom shot because these do have loom. These two do have loom. And I'll show you all of them on my wrist. I'll talk about prices on all of them as well. Just so you guys uh, kind of know where these stand now and what they were at retail. So here is the World Timer. So the World Timer overseas gets a bracelet. It also gets a rubber strap and a leather strap. The leather strap is crocodile. And all of the links have screws in the bracelet. So one of the nicest bracelets on any watch that I have ever handled. Better than AP, much better than Patek Philippe. This is the nicest bracelet on any watch that I've ever experienced. When you look at this, it's the cross, their cross, their logo uh, motif that goes through the entire bracelet. And then you have that logo on the bracelet right there. This doesn't really move very much. So it's really nice. It's very, very nicely fitted and made. And you do have micro adjust built into the buckle. So the buckle actually has about a millimeter or two millimeters on either side. Uh, and you just have to pull it out and pull it in. So it's on the fly, very easy to do. I was actually wearing this literally two days ago. It was really hot here in New York, almost 100 degrees. And that came in very handy because it was a little tight on my wrist. You could see the rotor from the back here in-house movement of course and it has a gold rotor that is an 18 karat gold rotor um, and it's solid gold you have quick release on the bracelet so you could actually just with their thumbnail uh, take this right off like this and then put it right back on or put the strap back on whatever you want to do it just snaps right back on and that's it screwing case back and I believe this gets 120 meters of water resistance or 150, somewhere in that range. So it's a little bit weird, but 
Let's quickly do measurements. It's not a small watch. Actually, none of these watches are that small. So it's 43 millimeter watch. Basically, it wears like a 43 millimeter watch. The lug to lug on here, you know, it doesn't really, it's about 51 millimeters, but on the bracelet and even on the strap, it's pretty similar to this, 52.9. So it's a big lug to lug as well. And it's not the thinnest watch on earth, considering that it's only 120 meters water resistant, but uh, so 12.6, something like that, uh, millimeters thick and uh, 5.9 millimeter crown. Not the biggest crown either. Uh, but the bracelet is really nice and the way it wears, I really like the way it wears on my seven and a half inch wrist. It's an integrated bracelet sports watch. So the retail on this watch when it was introduced and it's currently for sale in different dial colors, not this dial color, was $36,000. The last time I saw one for sale on eBay, it was selling for around that $60,000 mark because they have gone up in price. And also, uh, I saw one on Analog Shift, which is watches of Switzerland. They were selling it for over $70,000, around $73,000. So they are going for a lot of money. Very quickly, I'll throw it on my wrist, and then we will move on to the next watch. Today, I have on my Roger Dubuis Monagas. This is one of the nicest, if not the nicest, gold watch in my collection. And we're about to look at another gold watch in my collection. This is one of my favorites thin, beautiful. It has the uh, seal of Geneva on it. Really just an amazing watch. I have three, ironically, three Roger Dubuis, and I will be doing a video about those three in my next uh, three watch collection. And like I said, this is definitely one of my favorite watches of all time in my collection. These have been going up in price as well. I think I've been buying underappreciated watches for a very long time, and uh, I don't know, I guess people are coming around to some of these watches. That's one of them. And uh, prices on Roger Dubuis have been going up for one reason or another, especially the earlier ones like this. Um, you know, I think it's a beautiful watch and definitely worth every penny. But here you go, 43 millimeters on my seven and a half inch wrist. It does wear a little bit big, but I have to say, it's very comfortable. I wear this watch very often, and it is very, very comfortable. This is my go-to watch for almost everything. So uh, it's it's actually pretty rugged. It's not a delicate watch, and uh, it's really great for everyday use. Anyway, it is very expensive, and as they get more and more expensive, I get a little bit nervous about having such an expensive watch on my wrist. But next, Talking about expensive watches, this is a watch that actually retailed for $51,000 when it was new, and they discontinued this line completely. So you, if you want a traditional world timer, you cannot get this anymore. You could only get it in the overseas form. This is solid 18 karat rose gold. What they do, what Vacheron do, uh, are make this really a fully rose gold watch. So even the spring bars are rose gold. The hands are rose gold, the crown, the case back, the buckle, the screws that hold in the buckle, everything here is rose gold. And then you have an 18 karat yellow gold um, rotor here, which is beautifully uh, etched. It's like a, a guilloche pattern on there. What a beautiful rotor. Uh, it's just a beautiful movement. It's the exact same movement that you find in the overseas, obviously fitted to this case. Uh, is really the only difference. I have this on a very cheap strap. This is a strap that I bought from Amazon, I believe it was, it was definitely Amazon, and it cost me around $10. I wanted a strap in this color and this material. I could not find it anywhere. I went to like Jean Rousseau and they wanted, I forget how many hundreds of dollars and how much time they wanted to custom make it because it needed to be custom made for this watch. Uh, I went on Amazon, they had one in the size, in the color that I was looking for. So I said, what the hell, I'll try it. And I bought it uh, and I don't regret it. It's awesome, I love wearing it. it. Has leather on the inside, it's really cheap, 10 bucks. But there you go. Uh, just a beautiful watch with uh, you know a thickness to it too. Uh, it's not a thin watch. This is what I wear as a dress watch most of the time. If I am going out for an occasion or something like that, I end up wearing this watch or the Roger Dubuis that I just showed you uh, because 
I don't know. I just really love these two watches. I really don't own a lot of gold watches, and I'm not really the type of guy who wears gold, but somehow I ended up with, I think I have three, four gold watches. So uh, go figure. I don't know. Uh, and here we go. Here's the measurements. So this is not a small watch, as I just mentioned. 42.5, so it's not tiny. It's uh, pretty sizable. And then the Luxelug, Luxelug is not bad on the traditional case. Uh, it's 48.4. It is thick. It's thick because of the movement. The movement is a thicker movement. So it's 11.6 millimeters thick. You would expect it to be thinner because it's a Vacheron, but there you go. And 5.8 millimeters on the crown. Basically the same crown used on all of these watches in different materials. So very quickly, I will throw this on my wrist. So as I mentioned, this was retail. This retailed for around 51,000. Then I think they lowered the price after I had purchased it, but I got a discount when I purchased this a long time ago, uh, and I got a significant discount. And they lowered the price to around 49,000. And now if you would like one of these, you can get them for around 35,000. So cheaper than the stainless steel version that they currently sell, you can get the solid rose gold version. I don't understand the market these days, but that's the way it is. $35,000 on the secondary market. Um, I still paid less than that. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what I paid, but um, very, very good. And even that center portion, that is in rose gold. And the way that these both work is that there is a sapphire disc that sits over that map. And that map, I think it's a Lamford map. And I think it's called a Lamford map. And it is, basically it spins with that 24 hour track and that's how you tell the time because the local time is set at the bottom of the dial. Really, just a great watch, just a beautiful watch. It has uh, every time zone, so you even have half hour time zones, India is on here. Um, pretty cool. I, I wore this to a recent event and it gets a lot of attention from people who uh, know about watches and that's because it's just a cool, interesting piece that you know, Vacheron no longer make, unfortunately no longer make. Last but not least, and definitely one of my favorite watches in my collection is the Key to Lee. This is a titanium Vacheron. So Vacheron don't make a lot of watches in titanium. They have made titanium watches in the past, but it is kind of rare. One of my favorite watches that they make in titanium, and that is an overseas, the Corey Richards version. Uh, that was the limited edition that they actually made for purchase. I believe that was in titanium as well. That's probably uh, my ultimate grail watch of all time. And this is a really cool watch because uh, it has a 22 karat rose gold uh, a rotor. Actually, all of them are 22 karat. I think I was saying 18 karat, but these are all 22 karat. Um, and this one is in a PVD dark coating to make it look like it's tungsten or something like that. Now this is just a time only watch with a date. It has a screwed in case back and a push pull crown. This only gets like 30 meters of water resistance and you have a domed sapphire crystal. All the rest have flat sapphire crystals. This one is the only one with a slightly domed sapphire crystal. It has a very art deco case. It's a multi-piece case and I think it's why you don't get much water resistance with these watches. They made them in a bunch of different materials as well. You could have customized them. However, eventually they did away with that. Uh, the original watches like this one were pretty expensive, actually very expensive, and you were uh, you had to buy them as is, and then they eventually gave you the uh, option to customize. But the only way you were able to get this one was to buy it uh, when they initially came out. And these only sold for like two years, three years, something like that, and then they stopped making them. So this is on the supplied rubber strap, so this is the rubber strap that it came on. Uh, this is a titanium buckle. All of them have very similar uh, deployment buckles, except this one has the push buttons. I believe that the gold one does not. No, it doesn't. So uh, that's pretty much the only difference. You have a screwed in case back. I think you only get like 30 meters of water resistance. You get screws on the lugs are really annoying screws on this watch. Uh, but the show on this one, the really, really the purpose of buying this watch is the fact that it has a sapphire dial. And you can see there's like a silver line that goes around the uh, track of the date. So you have a little date window over here. It's all, all, it goes all the way around. It's just like 
a, a sapphire disc that circles around and there's a little white area and then um, that area actually moves to what the date is. Basically, that's it. Uh, so it's very simple. You have an applied logo, you have applied indices, only the primary indices, everything else is, uh, I believe, just printed on. I don't think there's a ton of loom on the indices or if they're loomed at all, I don't remember, but I will do a loom shot. If it is, it's not liberally applied. The hands have decent amount of loom, but nothing too crazy. The hands are black on here. They're sort of fence post stick hands, very, very simple. Um, and it's not the most legible watch that you've ever owned either because of that sapphire dial, but it's a really good looking watch. And it's a really interesting thing and sort of off the wall thing for Vacheron to do. But I was saying that line that goes around the center of that dial or around the, uh, you know, the outer portion of the center of the dial, that is a quote from, I believe, Vacheron uh, back to Constantin, who is in Switzerland or might have been the other way around. They were partners and there was a, a letter that he wrote. It was a quote from that letter just saying that, you know, people like our watches we should still we should stick to our guns and stick to our our quality and, and things like that it was that in that sort of vein a very cool quote um maybe i could throw it up if i have that quote and i'll throw it up on the screen so you guys could see what was actually said but that's it uh really awesome watch i think this retailed for in the neighborhood of twenty-seven thousand. i want to say and these uh, obviously are no longer available and these have become pretty scarce i don't think they are available readily so there aren't many sales that i have seen i have seen a few sell for around twenty five thousand dollars so basically if you add up everything that's on the table not including the roger dubuis i think this is in the neighborhood of well it's over a hundred thousand dollars just because that vacheron let's say it sells for sixty thousand dollars and uh this is a $35,000 watch around there. Um, and then this is about 20 or 25,000. So you're well over a hundred thousand dollars there. Uh, but retail and, and then whatever this sells for, uh, now around $60,000 or $70,000, whatever it is, it's well over $100,000. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. Uh, a lot of hard earned money went into these watches. So they are very, very important to me. Uh, anyway, very quickly, we're gonna do a loom shot and then wrap up the video because there is a little bit of loom on these two watches. Obviously, this is more of a dress watch, no loom on here. So we'll put this one aside and then we will do a very quick loom shot and then wrap up the video. Not a lot of loom for your money. <laughs> uh, very, very little loom. You guys know I love loom. Uh, it's pretty disappointing in my hand right here. This is my left hand. Uh, this is the key to Lee. Nothing too crazy, but when you add a little bit of light, you could see that sun that sort of appears. Um, and then there's the there's some wave pattern on the dial. Uh, a lot of that interacts with the light in general. So any sort of light, uh, it looks really good and it's pretty cool. And then, uh, of course, the overseas, the overseas just has the hands that are loomed. They are sort of stick hands as well. So obviously two different color looms here. Don't know why they did that, but that's fine. You know, obviously different watches, so that's perfectly fine, but um, interesting. Very little loom, uh, especially for a sports watch. You would wish that you'd have a little bit of loom uh, on that uh, overseas, but there you go. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. As I mentioned before, I worked really hard to get these watches. These were not easy purchase purchases for me. Um, even that Roche Dupuis, I mean, none of these are really easy purchases for me. Uh, however, I do buy and sell a lot and I usually try and make money on every sale uh, that I make. And that's really the way that I bought most of my watches. So, uh, you know, these are very special to me, represent a lot of hard work and I absolutely love them. Uh, I love every watch in my collection, but my Vacherons are particularly very uh, special to me because they were a grail for me for my whole life. I always wanted to own a Vacheron and now I own three. So that's pretty incredible. Anyway, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys, please. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon, it is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. 
please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.